So what do you see when you see something like an acorn? Well, when you look at an acorn, all you perceive is the physical manifestation of that acorn. This is viewing the acorn in a purely materialistic sense. The same is true with a newborn baby. All you see is a newly born human being. But since we are human beings, we can perceive things abstractly. For example, time is abstract with no physical manifestation of its own. Since we have an understanding of time, even though it's abstract, we are aware of the future, or at least that there will be a future. This understanding of how a material object could change or act through time is how we understand potential. For example, this object or person has the potential to do or become this, whatever that is. Now let's look back at the acorn. Again, our shallow perspective of the acorn is just an acorn, but now we are aware that it has a potential to become a tree in the future. Now does this mean that the tree exists? It does technically, in potential. It simply hasn't been actualized yet. And this is where we can understand Aristotle's idea of entelechy, which was a state in which all potential is realized and actualized. So the fact that something can be actualized and realized implies that there was an existence of that thing beforehand. If something can be actualized, then it at least exists in abstraction. So what if the acorn then never becomes a tree? Does that mean the potential tree didn't exist after all? It still did but it wasn't the only potential form that the acorn could have taken. An acorn state of entelechy would be becoming a tree, in which it accomplishes what its DNA is structured to become in full. But there is a potential state of the acorn being eaten that could be actualized, or a potential state of an acorn being burned that could be actualized, and so on and so forth. So why are we talking about acorns? Well, the same principles can be applied to human beings. The only thing a newborn baby has actualized is its existence. Everything else the baby could do or become is still potential. And I would say that this number of potential selves are near infinite, with one state of entelechy being in existence. There is a potential self of the baby, for example, becoming a firefighter or a scientist, or we can get even more specific, like a scientist who won his Little League championship when he was 12. Potential to do things is time sensitive. In other words, as time moves forward, many potential selves are burned off, and the newborn baby will zone in on a potential self. Once the baby is 13, for example, there is no more potential for the baby to win his Little League championship as he is now too old. That self has burned off or has been left behind. It is incredibly important that you realize the potential selves that you are zoning in on and the ones that you have currently left behind. Think of yourself running forward toward a near infinite amount of objects, ranging from a wall to Disneyland, for example. By not realizing the potential selves in front of you, you are unknowingly going to be running into one of them whether you want to or not. This is how people wake up one day at 40 asking themselves where it all went wrong, sometimes not even recognizing themselves, because it's not themselves, it's someone that they ran into. They look back in time thinking of all the decisions they made, and just then in that moment realizing all of the potential selves that were in front of them but are now too late to actualize, they've already been burned off. Denzel Washington gave an interesting story. Each of us will be on our deathbed at one point, and surrounding us will be spirits that were within us. These spirits represent your unfulfilled potentials, spirits of your ideas, your talents, and your gifts. They are around your bed, angry and disappointed. They say, we came to you so that you can bring us to life, but now we have to go to the grave together. It's also important to decipher when a potential self has actually been left behind forever. Many discount potential selves for dead when they may actually still be there, even if far out of sight. It's also important to know when to let go of a potential self and realize it's now gone. For example, a 40-year-old who's training to fight in the UFC, it's probably time to leave that potential self behind, which allows him to notice the actual potential selves in front of him, instead of concerning himself with someone who is already dead. The first step is to realize that those potential yous are real, and they are very real, and you will be running into one, whether you like to or not. I believe it would be rather wise to first look up and not keep your head down while running toward them. Some people are shocked with fear or anxiety seeing how many unwanted potential selves there are, or the fact that they have to make a decision on which potential self they want. There are also some people who are naively optimistic, only seeing the desirable potential selves, not noticing the reality of just how low humans can get. Then there are those who never realize they are even running, and their future is chosen for them by chance. Finally, there is the wise one, understanding and fearing the reality of the ugly selves in front of them, but also understanding and striving toward the good selves. 
Aristotle's state of entelechy for an acorn is simple. The fully actualized potential of an acorn is a tree. For us, our state of entelechy is self-defined, or so we think, physically, socially, intellectually, and spiritually. But we can never reach it if it's never defined. And sometimes people leave this undefined in order to avoid knowing that they may fail. Therefore, I urge you all to lift your head up and look ahead with fear, but also excitement, and the meaning that can be had by seeing yourself run toward your state of entelechy by each day. Thank <laughs> you.